is Neurotransformation Journey. Neurotransformation Journey with Dr. Kathy Holloway introduces viewers to the simple self-care steps that address medical mysteries and restore healthy vitality. Decades of teaching the neuroscience of medical interventions to healthcare practitioners internationally and healing from her own brain injuries illuminate Dr. Kathy's grounded, logical approach to self-care and healing. So now, please welcome your host, Dr. Kathy Hallway. Well, hello. Welcome back. Dr. Kathy Hallway, physical therapist, here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. Nice to see you. And uh, today, today we're going to be um, expanding a little bit on that meditative soft belly breathing that we you know have been exploring this whole time and it turns out that a little bit of attention to our respiration process can have a big impact on our brain circuitry so uh, on our cognitive processing our memory consolidation our emotional processing so let's let's go Let's go figure it out together, okay? We've been talking about belly breathing and brain reorganization through most of our shows here. And we now know that pausing to slide in, find your soft rhythmic belly breath, it resets your parasympathetic peaceful nervous system and opens up your brain circuitry for healthy coherence. So we're familiar with getting organized from our belly up. And, you know, we learn to start where we are, okay? It's not like there's a big, heavy magic story you got to make your mind follow. No, I want us to explore our experience of feeling that belly expand when you inhale and feel everything soften as you exhale and slide in. And so to learn our self-engagement with our belly breathing, we start in our familiar place. And for most folks, that's usually mouth breathing. (laughs) You'll notice in my meditations with you that it's like, look, mouth, nose breathing, don't worry about it yet. Let's just find the rhythm, but it does matter and our nose is designed to help us breathe safely efficiently and in proper synchrony with our brainstem respiratory circuits but it also has certain brain power connections that enrich our lives in critical ways from survival reproduction rhythms to cognition emotional processing and memory recall. So as we'll see, there's the mechanical aspects of it and the multidimensional brain circuit aspects, that magic. So let's look at the mechanical aspects first. Our noses, our nasal cavities are aligned with nasal air that is meant to filter out dust, allergens, pollen, and other foreign airborne particles. And this nasal breathing, this, that inhale, humidifies and warms the incoming air. It increases our oxygen uptake and circulation, and it slows down our breathing. This all compiles to aid our immune system, lowers our risk of snoring and sleep apnea, and supports our proper oral alignment and function. So... If we're wired for that brilliant respiratory process, uh, what turns us into mouth breathers? There's a number of obstacles that might divert us from nasal respiration. And it could start as early as your embryological confusion. Maybe that brain tube couldn't build that nasal respiratory part right. Um, Maybe there was delivery trauma or premature birth. You know, our autonomics aren't ready to breathe us till 35 weeks gestation. So there could be survival wiring confusion. Or 
once we're out here in the world, maybe there's nasal disorganization. You got a deviated septum. What? Well, originally your mouth and your nose were one tube and it wasn't until the palate bone flipped up to make your hard palate that they split into their own separate tube ways. So did the brain stem wire up properly with that? And once you're here, other oral motor confusion could include tongue tie. That is a big one right now. Uh, ear tubes, tonsils, adenoids, nasal polyps, your respiratory circuits, position your tongue to keep your airway open. And if that's a big challenge, then wiring for the airway to open and nasal breathing might be just too much. It might not make sense. Also, any sort of oral trauma, oral trauma that leads to clenched mouth breathing. This might include surgical intubation. Clenched mouth breathing, mm -hmm, I'm breathing, I'm fine, blocks the brainstem's ability to position the tongue for an open airway, diminishes our proper respiration, especially during sleep. And there might have been disease processes like asthma, sinus infections, strep throat, bronchitis, pneumonia. I ask about all those things when we start working together. Um, in a more direct, abrupt way, traumatic brain injury, concussion, epilepsy may also interfere with this dynamic. So our amazing brain circuitry is wired from brainstem to thalamus and beyond. It is wired to keep us breathing, moving, and conscious, or breathing smoothly and sleeping. And these, these mechanical or disease obstacles might downregulate that respiratory circuitry to function only in emergency mouth open mode. So learning how to nasal breathe now might be a brand new challenge for many of us. And that's why we start with the security of finding our belly breath rhythms. Later, as we realize we can breathe with a soft jaw, what? And maybe our mouth naturally closes and we learn to have a soft tongue on the roof of our mouth, right where it belongs. Let's go there. So, you slide in and take a breath. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And uh, buckle up because we got a wild ride ahead of us uh, about this whole nasal breathing process, nose breathing. And as this century's neuro research plows ahead with its discoveries, our understanding of these respiratory processes expands in some surprising ways. So, What's really happening with that nasal inhale? Well, your whole olfactory system is run by cranial one, your olfactory nerve. And so you've got a nerve in each nostril. And yeah, they're busy even when there's nothing to smell out there or nothing you think there is to smell. Um, these sensory neurons detect the mechanical pressure caused by airflow in your nostrils. So when you inhale through your nose, that, mm -hmm, that air moving through stimulates the olfactory bulbs up into your forebrain. And that information is sent to your amygdala, your hippocampus, your prefrontal cortex to light up our emotional memory and learning centers. What, yes, the very rhythms of our nasal inhalation wakes up those emotion and memory centers and your learning centers. Oh, I know I'm here. And when I read this, it made me wonder, is this a key to how our deep rhythmic meditative breathing leads to improved working memory capacity, like we talked about? And they even went so far as to determine that memory recall is significantly better when you're inhaling than when you're exhaling. So with starting with this information, you know, the researchers are like, whoa, uh, disrupted nasal breathing throws off our memory circuits. So what else is it doing up there for cognitive decline? What happens in our stress patterns with anxiety, with Alzheimer's disease? And they've even started with a very simple four corner breathing process to get your Alzheimer's folks kind of in synchrony. You breathe that way, they breathe with you. And this also relates to deeper memory processing. So the researchers identify that memories pass through these stages in their development. They're encoded, okay? They're consolidated, they light up for recognition and then retrieval. So nasal respiration plays an important role in all of those steps to encode, consolidate, recognize, retrieve our memories. The nasal respiration vibrations entrain those nerves that enhance that. And so as respiration impacts the consolidation of our memory episodes. This supports the new story that then cognitive functions are woke up by that too. So oh, let's consider this, that our rhythmic nasal breathing coordinates and synchronizes these important brain mind memory functions. It matters. Okay, from moving in a place of our life of like, what am I breathing? I don't know. To like, oh, wait, when I sit in my corner, I can have my belly breath. Okay, and now let's go the next step. Let's land with it. Soft jaw, soft tongue, nasal breathing. Because you know what? When our respiration diverts to mouth breathing, those circuit connections, memory, cognition, awareness are diminished. Mouth breathing disrupts these critical memory rhythms and diminishes the encoding of information as well as recognition processes. How are you going to learn if you're mouth breathing? Apparently it matters. So 
The other important piece here is that it's a two-way dialogue that the vibration of inhaling through your nose sets up this oscillation directly into your brain and then says, hey, uh, I'm here. What do we need to do out in the world? And then your brain says, oh, you're there? Okay, here's what we should do. And so those upper brain circuits, um, you know, are sending signals back to your olfactory bulbs. And that includes your amygdala, your neocortex, your hippocampus, your locus ceruleus. Remember that? When you're breathing nice and slow and that circuit wakes up and goes, ooh, have the happy juice and let's, let's redo our stories, huh? So... You know, yes, your nose does have an important job to be discriminating amongst odors and enhancing our sensitivity to odor detection, filtering out what's irrelevant background smells out there, and allowing our higher cortical processes to set arousal and attention discrimination to certain odors. So these are your higher brain centers saying, hey, pay attention, smells like that. You know what that means, right? Maybe it means a good thing and you're getting a reward. Maybe, you know, your daughter made brownies and that's what's welcoming you home. You know, it's, it's a dynamic, dynamic process. So what if we were able to consider this nasal breathing dynamic as its own reward system. As we'll see, this is functioning through your autonomic nervous system as well. And, um, you know, so it's part of our sensory radar. Where are we, our environment? Oh, I'm here. It's okay. Breathe deeper. So now we know when, you know, this nasal breathing dynamic is like really smoothing things out in our brain so it can work better for us. And when we find that breathing rhythm, our brain circuits find a whole new level of ease and juicy coherence. And this is where we transform body, brain, mind, memory, mischief. So... Slide on in. Find that soft belly breath. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV, and we'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here. Hope you're breathing smooth and happy in there and maybe even through your nose. Mm -hmm. And isn't that fascinating? These vibrational dynamics, what that the very <laughs> sensation of air vibrating in through our nostrils wakes up our brain circuits. Wow. So how else is that? <laughs> <laughs> that olfactory nerve, cranial one nerve um, run, working for us. Well, that, that olfactory nerve in each nostril sends information to the bulb, which is right in the bottom of our brain there. And it's part of our autonomic nervous system. So it is meant to use that input to regulate greater body functions. And that's pretty powerful stuff for the shortest cranial nerve in our system. Okay, the shortest sensory nerve in our system. Uh, yeah, it's detecting vibration of the air moving. It's sure smelling in a very large array of directions. And it is working with our autonomics. So those nasal cavities are extensively innervated by both sympathetic, stressful, and parasympathetic peaceful endings. So autonomic stimulation in either direction can modulate the responses of those olfactory sensory neurons to odorants and might also impair the me mechanoreceptor vibration responses. So does a strong stress drive restrict those vibrational signals into the autonomic circuit board. And you know, our autonomic learning focus focuses so much on the visual input. All right. Well, that's how we first learned it. You see something, oh, I'm in danger, trigger, reaction. Um, and that triggers us into sympathetic drive or peaceful drive through our HPA axis, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis, and creates our survival reactions or reassures us that we're secure and can slide in to our peaceful parasympathetic place. But one thing we need to add into this dynamic to understand expand our understanding of these conscious smells that we assume is driving the process. We've discussed that certain smells can elicit fond memories. Oh yeah, the brownies. Oh, that was an unconscious imprinting and our parasympathetic celebrate. But certain other smells may trigger a stress reaction, again, unconsciously imprinted and trigger that reaction to it. So it turns out that many odors are processed unconsciously, both from the environment and from people nearby. And the roots of that might reach back to our very arrival in this world. Um, it's now established that skin on skin contact is important between baby and mother especially right after delivery, especially if it's a preemie birth or C-section, both to regulate the microbiome autoimmune activation for the baby, but also to establish a pheromone connection. Wait, what are pheromones? Hmm? Pheromones are chemical substances that are secreted outside the body in fluids like urine, sweat, semen, breast milk. Okay. Baby on your chest is smelling where to go find the nipple to suck to feed from that pheromone signal. Okay. And this is a hormone signaling system from one individual to another of the same species, which triggers a response in the individual receiving it, such as a hormonal change or a specific behavior. Ooh, there's food, let me go get it. And pheromones are produced by a whole variety of animals and plants. It's like a secret communication vibe transmitting all around us. Is this not part of our secure landing when we arrive? Before we can think a story about 
it, we're communicating through that neurohormonal autonomic sensory processing. And our pheromone receptors are present up here in our vomer nasal organ. And it was long debated whether humans even had them and whether we were participating in this dynamic because we were conscious and we had brains. Why would we need to talk through a hormone system like this? But uh, yes, yes, we do participate this way. And here's an example. Beyond the baby's born, lands on mom's belly, smells where the milk is waiting, okay? In a male-female couple, when the male's pheromone system perceives that his female partner is ovulating because her body is sending out those neurohormonal signals, this unconsciously provokes a response from him, his pheromone system, to escalate his sperm production. Yeah, and this is part of our survival of a species system. So we need to add this sensory dynamic of conscious and unconscious smells into the array of environmental signals that may tr be triggering us into hypervigilance or relief and acceptance. And this is where, you know, all we've learned about our autonomic nervous system here is some of the triggers were implanted in us when we were young. And so, yes, she might not have had a conscious mind to create a story about it even. This is the early, early stuff, our sense of smell. And so as we start with the security of our belly breath, and we learn that we can trust sliding in, feeling that belly breath. I know I'm here. My jaw can soften. Uh -huh. There's my tongue resting on the roof of my mouth, soft where it belongs. And oh, my nasal passageways are wide open to do my breathing for me. So this, yeah, there may be a trigger here or there, but you know what? You're in your secure place and oh, here I am. Let's keep going with that rhythm and land in our mind and memory processing. So, Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV, and we'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like, it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com.
Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. Did you have a nice soft breathing break? Mm -hmm. I hope so. Good. Uh, it turns out there's one more brain circuit link we need to acknowledge here. And what have we learned over all these months together right here is that when we start landing in our familiar belly breath and yeah, there's my deepening of my breath and my soft jaw and even my jello eyeballs. Um, oh, and now I know it's waking up my nasal processes too. This rhythm opens our brainstem circuits to keep us breathing, and that flows upstream to our thalamus. Uh huh. Yes. What have we learned about our dear thalamic capsules back there behind our eyeballs? That thalamus is, um, it's an integral communicator. It is so important for communicating information from body up to brain and throughout different brain centers. So, you know, we've got first order thalamic nuclei that process our sensory input from the environment, from the periphery, and then relay it to sensory cortex so we can figure out what's going on, right? And higher order thalamic nuclei says, whoa, all right, who needs this information? And it passes the information around to different cortical areas. So yes, thalamus is managing our sensory motor function, our consciousness, our visceral function, our craniofacial and oral motor nasal function, and our sensory motor stuff. So, and they also control our sleep, okay, with consciousness. So, um, all this organizes to our insula to affirm our presence and our organization, and then connects cortically so that we have that coherent body, brain, mind, mischief dynamic. And well, with that review, it would only make sense that a section of those thalamic capsules is also processing our olfactory, smelly attention, odor discrimination, and flavor perception from both the nose and the mouth. This is what they call odor taste mixtures because, <clears throat> you know, when you taste something without smelling it, that's different than when you smell it and taste it together. And so the thalamus is organizing that sensory input and it, you know, it's a key node between sensory and prefrontal cortex areas for processing that for our ingestive dynamics. Ooh, I like the smell and taste of that. Let's eat some more. So um, it's also this part of the thalamus, uh, you know, wakes up in our cognitive functions, attention, memory. It's, this is a key part of our brain wiring player to what we're smelling or not smelling, uh, what we're tasting, our memory, our attention, our learning. And it's also, um, it's also working to illuminate that part of our olfactory sensory network that's working in the autonomics. So, oh wait, I'm paying attention. What's that smell over there? Oh, there's the story I have about that. Oh, I know that's good. I'll walk in and have that brownie or like, wait, I don't know about that smell over there. I'm going to hold back and see what's going on. So, you know, this, this is a key player in driving our awareness, our presence, and our interpretation and response. Yeah. And when this, <clears throat> when this moves through us, you know, um, you know, this is the, the organization of our cognitive memory and rewards value processing. It's all, t it's all together. It works all together. And, um, this is also where we need to be aware that if 
there's been uh, uh, old sympathetic triggers in there. How does that interrupt the whole greater circuit dynamic? So, yes, we like to hold the stories that, uh, you know, happy smell memories. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. But the whole we're used to thinking, oh, our, our cortical mind holds the memories. No, these are sensory memories. This is how we're wired. So, and then it has that big impact on our autonomic response system. And then what does that do to disrupt our nasal breathing and further compound that cortical clench? Mm-hmm. So I think what we're looking at here is, um, you know, who knew that our nasal sensory processing was, you know, such an unknown, unconscious process. And how do we use this information to reclaim or create our balanced neurosensory autonomic dynamic? What do I even mean by that? <laughs> well, if you're going to start nasal breathing here and like, oh, I can. I can be soft jawed, soft tongue, nasal breathing. And, oh, that's delirium I've never known before. Okay, that feels good. Let's do some more. Um, then, you know, what's that landing feel like in you? What's that creative coherence wiring wake up in your imagination and your thought process and your certainty in your security of being here it like it's like lets you be fully here so how does this help us balance our neurosensory autonomic dynamic how do we give ourselves permission to move past old unconscious clenches to let our rhythmic nasal breathing restore our primal self-organization. Wait, what? Nose breathing activates our primal self-organization? Uh, yeah, you know what to do here. Slide on in with that breath and go, go explore yourself. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And, uh, uh huh. <laughs> yes, we have gone way beyond the nose in the nasal breathing process today. Um, but as we've learned, this is an epic, silent sensory center that may have had a huge role in directing our unconscious dynamic. Mm -hmm. So yes, our breathing is an automatic autonomic process that most of us have not engaged with for so much of our lives until you sat with me here for the past few months. But um, so sometimes our close, the closest we've come to breathing is uh, some cortical overlords in a story over there created a story of breathe here like this and it'll all be better now. Okay, uh, you feel that clench when, uh, no, your mind can't regulate or restore those functions. You know what the means, meme says, calm down, you know, said no one to no one else able to calm down. You don't calm down because your mind's telling you to. You don't find that breath because your mind is telling you to. You, it's up to you to slide in and feel your belly breath bringing your rhythms to life. And now we know, yes, that interoceptive vital breathing rhythm influences our neural activity, which in turn impacts our cognitive functions, including attention, memory recall, and emotional processing. So think about it too. Doesn't this explain why when we're in a triggered clench, when we think we're in danger, and we don't even know what that trigger was, that like, mm, yeah, can't think now, mm, yeah, clench, can't breathe, can't think, don't know, and right? So is this not part of it? What did your what did your unconscious nasal radar scan on the horizon that provoked something for you? So now we know whatever, when you feel yourself starting to clench up like that, we do what? You pause, you slide in, you recognize you're still here, you feel that belly breath and you soften up again. Even when we don't know what the trigger was, you can till, still slide in. And now we have a different idea. Hmm. Could have been a, a whole list over there. So the rhythm of our nasal breathing creates electrical activity in the brain. And this enhances our emotional judgments, and our memory recall. When someone says to you, don't you remember when that happened? And what have we learned to do? We learned to clench, to try to reach a memory from clench. No, pause, slide in, breathe. Okay. <laughs> especially nasal breathing, especially the inhalation that goes right to those memory circuits. So yeah, this is a good thing to go explore but I need to offer a word of caution regarding breathing patterns and some, you know, online social media, medical misinformation that's floating around out there. And I'm talking about this notion of mouth taping where you tape your mouth shut to go to sleep. Now, Yes, we need to more, be more organized with our nasal breathing, especially during our sleep. But if there have been structural obstructions and your brainstem wiring is organized to try to breathe you around those obstructions, how have you created very clever compensatory sleep breathe wiring patterns? And if, you know, taping your mouth shut at night may just add to more confusion to the situation. All right. So please don't, please don't start with that. Not that you can't get there, but where do we start from this? This is why we practice 
our soft belly breath from our quiet, secure landing place. And as we learn our breathing rhythms, then we bring them forward to our daily activities. So you know it in your quiet corner. Can you sit peacefully on the couch reading or watching TV or a movie and nose breathe? Can you sit in comfort and connection with another person and nose breathe with ease? These are the simple beginning steps that are powerful, powerful rewiring facilitators. First, we learn it in our secure, calm environment. Then we bring it out to the world and then it becomes more real. And as that gets more familiar for you, yeah, then maybe we can start playing with a little lights out ritual to help transition to the nose breathing sleeping stage. And I created this example over 30 years ago as I was trying to learn how to sleep without a grinding, clenching, locked jaw. <laughs> Imagine how that disrupts sleeping and breathing patterns. <laughs> And while my overnight jaw grind is long gone now, these rituals remain. So something to play with here. Uh, it can be as simple as translating our meditative focus from our daytime landings. So yes, find your lying down, going to sleep position. And then find your belly breath and feel your legs and your feet resting with you. And notice how that belly breath in that horizontal position leads to a very special size sign of relief. Whew, I'm in bed. The day is done. Let's go. And then maybe just a soft hand on your face to feel your jaw showing you its breathing alignment. And oh, there, look at that. Your nose breathing. Okay. All securely showing you. You're safely here. You can breathe smoothly through the night. And you know, this has an extra bonus effect on our sleep cycles. Mm -hmm. Our critical revitalizing sleep rhythms between REM sleep and slow wave plays an important role in brain hygiene and consolidating our memory circuits. So all the more reason to go slide into another soft belly breath. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. 
We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, welcome back. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. And uh, <laughs> what's left to say? Uh, it may be a very simple process to nose breathe, but that happens through a very complex neurosensory system of our nasal passages, our olfactory system, our autonomic nervous system, all to screen and protect us before we go wake up our memory, our cognition, and our attention. And so it's a good thing that we know our belly breathing rhythms, right? It's a good thing. And we've learned it in our safe corner. And mm -hmm, yeah, now let's learn that soft tongue, soft jaw, breathing right here through your nose. And um, this, we, uh, let's breathe like that and affirm our security. I know I'm here, right? We talked about this right from the beginning of the, who I landed, I'm here, good. Because, you know, there might just be a couple of oddball, multi-sensory trigger patterns in there, We've been clenching a long time. We've been clenching long before we had stories to make up to understand why. All right. So now, now this simple nose breathing is inviting us to land deeper in the soft truth of our complex selves. Look what we've done. We've built our own landing place inside. We've built that deep well of wellness in us. And now we can, you know how this goes, the breather, deeper you breathe, the deeper old stuff burbles up and then let it go. Okay, it's not to shut you down, it's to clean it up and get back to this. This softer is stronger thing. The softer you land in this deep belly breath, with your nasal breathing. Uh-huh. The stronger your resilience, your truth moves you safe in this world. And so it's all figure outable. Okay. You've got the tools. And under under those old triggers that you sweep out the door are sweet memories. Okay, there are sweet memories in there somewhere and where you felt seen and heard and held in the world where you were playing and creating in a way that mattered to you. And there's the true essence of your presence and your magic that you bring to this world. So, mm -hmm. yep, there's the truth of Nasal breathing wakes up your memory circuits. <laughs> okay. Nasal breathing wakes up your body brain wiring to bring you into the fullness of you. And so that you can learn the breath you were meant to bring here. And you can let your body, brain, mind, mysteries find their magical coherence now. So this week, <clears throat> Go explore. All right. Soft belly breath, little nasal breathing. Dr. Kathy here with your neurotransformation journey on Bold Brave TV. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you next week. You've been watching Neurotransformation Journey with your host, Dr. Kathy Hallway. Tune in each week as Dr. Kathy will introduce a common challenge and outline basic resolution strategies. Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, here on Bold Brave TV.